Today we're here with Dennis Baltzis uh, from Soulstar Pharma, Richard Bernard, our Chief Inves Investment Officer at Whitehaven, and uh, we wanted to really address the issue of the coronavirus, and that's why we brought in a specialist, Dennis Baltzis, who is a Dr. Dennis Baltzis, I should say, who's, uh, well, maybe you can give us a little, uh, you know, your background. Uh, yeah, so I, I studied uh, microbiology and immunology at McGill University, and I did my uh, a PhD also at McGill University in experimental medicine. Uh, did my postdoc in Scotland in Dundee University uh, with uh, studying, focusing on immunology. And right now I'm currently the president of Soulstar Pharma. You know, we're uh, developing uh, antimicrobial agents. So we're, kind of, we're quite aware of what's going on in the situation with the coronavirus. That's why we're here to discuss a little bit about it. Yeah. And uh, maybe start off, maybe we can start off on. Is, is this really an emergency? Is this a panic? Because you see social media, you see the media, you see everything that's going on. Donald Trump coming out, it's not a big issue. Suddenly we're in an emergency lockdown. Italy's letting people decide, decide right. on who to let to, to treat and who not to treat, uh, live or die. So maybe just put everybody into perspective what's going on. Well, obviously we have to take this seriously because the WHO announced that it's last week that it's a global pandemic. So all countries will be affected. This is a new pathogen. It's not a virus that's been going around for a long time. It's a new one that recently jumped from animals to humans. So clearly no one on earth is immune to it right now. This is why it's becoming uh, an emergency in Europe right now because it's been spreading rapidly, especially in the case we saw with Italy. And new pathogens are extremely dangerous because we don't know anything about them at the moment. We're gathering information. The whole scientific global community is studying to gather all this data to find out how you know virulent the strain is that's going around and how deadly this virus is. And from what we see so far, um, we're we're seeing you know in, in isolated countries. If you look at the death rates, the they can creep up up to eight percent, such as we saw in China and Italy and even in Iran, which a lot of the news uh, isn't covering right now. But it's also a big problem in Iran. And uh, right now, the, the CDC declared uh, Europe as the hub or the center of uh, you know, contain, contagion uh, spread for the rest of the world. So basically, Europe is, in the, is getting close to being completely locked down. And uh, the other thing I want to mention is that because no one has immunity to this virus, because it's a new virus, uh, everyone has the responsibility to, you know, make sure they don't get uh, you know, exposed to it. And, and if they do, they have to make sure that they isolate themselves from the public because no one is immune to it. We don't have a vaccine or any uh, treatment options to fight the infection. Everybody's treating uh, patients that are infected for symptom management, especially in severe cases with pneumonia. So therefore, there's no, there's no actual treatment out there at the moment. So it's very important to isolate yourself. So Dennis, I have a question for yep. you. Uh, obviously, we follow the financial market in real time. Every day we see news of a company that's working on a vaccine. Uh, w what does it mean if they ever get a vaccine? What's the time frame of this? What does it do if somebody's infected? Right. So right now, um, people are developing a vaccine based on the you know information that we got since the December outbreak. And they're trying out to develop a vaccine, but that could take a minimum a year, maybe even up to three years, depending on the situation. Uh, and also, there's there's been talk about other antiviral agents being developed that have been used for uh, other uh, viruses. But again, we have to do clinical trials, get more information, and gather this information to see if it works. Because uh, some of these antiviral agents didn't work with previous viruses, and they're not they're just taking them off the shelf, trying to uh, see if they will work for this new virus. And right now, like I said, we don't have any treatments at the moment. So, um, you know, people are rushing to create vaccines. But like I said, this could take a year, maybe longer. And hopefully by then this pandemic will uh, subside and eventually we'll do more studies to develop uh, some uh, new treatments for this virus. The other aspect that we could understand is that maybe we could, you could shed some light is the herd immunity, the lockdown, the social, you know, maybe there's two ways of doing it. Either you let everybody get infected or you sit back and the curves that they keep talking about, maybe just touch a bit about. Yeah, about so, so what's happening now, at least in, in, in our situation in Canada, uh, the government uh, is telling everyone to do uh, social isolation. So basically there's, there's like three ways to contain a new virus. 
Uh, one is to uh, isolate sick patients, uh, which is mainly done in hospitals. So isolation is done mainly in hospitals, where they isolate ill patients versus the people who aren't uh, infected. And the next thing is to quarantine, which is what we're doing right now. We're asking people who have traveled, who have been exposed to people who maybe have this virus, to quarantine for at least two weeks. And um, the reason for that is because we believe there's an incubation period for up to two weeks uh, for this virus. Uh, most people get symptoms within five days, uh, such as fever, cough, and in, in some extreme cases, there's severe uh, uh, acute pneumonia. So what we're asking people is just to quarantine themselves for two weeks, just because there's been cases that asymptomatic people can be spreading the virus. So we're still, we're still gathering information to understand how this is working. And the third thing is to do uh, uh, some sort of community um, uh, containment, meaning there's two ways. You either do a complete lockdown, like we're seeing in Italy, where they're locking down uh, social gatherings, uh, events, uh, people are staying home to, to promote, uh, to prevent the virus from spreading. And the other way is what we're doing here in Canada is called uh, social isolation, which is basically uh, not a complete lockdown, but at least to isolate people from uh, large social gatherings and in this case we were talking about with gatherings over 250 people uh, sporting events concerts uh, you know limiting yourself to going to uh, large group events and from that you can that that will help us isolate the virus meaning that from uh, people who are healthy that want to go and do their business and go around in the city uh, that's fine but for people who are actually ill they need to be isolated and because we don't know the incubation period at the moment we're suspecting it might be two weeks we're asking everybody to be aware of this and self-isolate in case especially if you traveled recently and this is the reason why we're asking people for two weeks from now because within two weeks we're going to readjust and reassess the situation how many cases are happening in canada and from now we're still we're at low risk so this is why we're not we're asking people not to panic don't go uh, binge shopping because you're not helping anyone if you're buying all the cleaning supplies and not giving a chance for other people to have, you know, some sort of sterilization agents at their home. Uh, and, you know, basically not to panic right now. We're not in a case like we see in Italy or the rest of Europe. We're not on lockdown right now. So taking these preventions of being in social isolation will prevent this from going into the second stage, which is complete uh, city lockdown. And that's what happened in, 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 in Europe, is that they started to do the same thing, but obviously people, the, the people that were sick didn't stay home, they just kept doing their business, right. got involved, got mixed with the people that weren't sick, and we see what's going on in Italy, and the military is going down the street and telling people to go home. I think this morning I read that uh, even uh, Greece right now is uh, just going around with military as well and trying to get people to stay home. The I think the it, like you said, it's not about a panic. It's a question of uh, everybody has a responsibility with a new, with a new virus that we don't know anything about that can, uh, that can morph or can can change. There's, there's two strains, from what I understood right now. Maybe we could touch about that. Uh, and from what we understood is that it, when the reason why it spread outside of China was because it gives you symptoms after four or five days, and therefore the screening process for the people that were out leaving Wuhan. Well, they didn't see it, and that's why these people left and right, kind of spread. This is why a lot of people um, weren't taking it too seriously at the beginning, because like ninety percent of the cases were in China, and once it started hitting Europe and the rest of the world, uh, we declared it a pandemic. But we didn't have enough data to understand a lot about this virus. That's why we're asking people to be take this seriously. It's a new virus. We in, it's similar to the SARS that we had back in two thousand two. Um, but it's an actual new virus. It's not the same virus that we saw back then. And, you know, that, that took two years to contain as well. And in this case, this is a new virus, like I said. We're gathering information. At the time, no one knew the incubation period. And this is why we saw asymptomatic patients spreading the virus as well. And unfortunately, what's happening in Europe is, uh, uh, you know, it's it's horrible situation for the medical staff because uh, this virus spreads exponentially right now and the health system can't support everyone like i, I think uh, i read that there's about 5000 uh, icu beds in in all, all of italy and let's say half of those are used for people who have this covid-19 disease um you know within the next week if if italy doesn't get this under control uh, they won't have any more 
ICU beds for people who have severe pneumonia. They're just gonna let people. Whoever. Yeah, and right now what they're doing is they're they're making decisions on based who would get medical treatment. Uh, people who are, you know, ill with let's say a cancer or people who have this virus infection. So they're making life decisions, which is unfortunate because the healthcare system should help everyone, not not pick and choose who should get treatment. Yeah, and I think that's the 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 reason here in Canada is we haven't gone completely to a lockdown. Is we're not there yet. Right. But so that Spain, Greece, and Italy, and France, uh, and and the UK took another measure, from what we understood, is that they're just letting everybody just get. Yeah. So so that's why everybody's panicking uh, in the UK in, at the moment because. Um, the, the UK government decided to focus on herd immunity, which basically means they're going to allow the general population to get infected or let it take its course, basically. Uh, and eventually the hope is that within a few weeks, those people infected that are low risk will develop immunity. And by being surrounded by people who have some immunity, this will prevent the people who are you know, immunocompromised not to get infected. But this theory is based on vaccines. So if, let's say, 90% of the population is vaccinated, um, we're seeing a nice herd immunity to help those, let's say, 5-10% that cannot get vaccinated. But because this is a new strain, a new virus, and we don't know a lot of information about this, how, how deadly it is, how virulent it is, um, we're still gathering all this information and taking a chance to ask your population to let them take its course and develop herd immunity is very risky in my opinion um we'll have to see how it plays out for them but uh i've i've read in the uh, the scientific community in the uk that they're actually opposing this and they're asking the government to do uh, uh social uh, isolation like most countries are doing to prevent a lockdown like in we see in italy and this herd immunity is very risky because we don't know much about this virus right now and i don't know if this is the best strategy they have right now but like I said, uh, I we'll find out. We'll find out, and hopefully, you know, it won't travel to other countries uh, and spread like crazy. So, Dennis, uh, at early stage, we saw uh, President Trump uh, stating that it might just go away in the spring when the weather gets better. Like, is this a possibility? What the well, look, this, this all this all this talk about, you know, we don't get the flu in the winter and in, in the summer. Mainly in the winter is because we're, you know. We're in close proximity in the winter. Uh, the virus won't withstand the heat. But all this is based on previous virus uh, knowledge. This is a new virus. We don't know if it will withstand heat as much. But what we do know from these envelope virus that we call RNA viruses is um, instead of going from, let's say, uh, uh, you know, being in, on a surface, if someone sneezes on a surface, it can last for a few hours, sometimes a few days. Uh, yes, in the heat, we might think that uh, it would disintegrate the virus faster. Um, but again, uh, we don't have this knowledge right now. We're still studying this virus, but this is all assumptions based on uh, previous data from other viruses. And, but we can't assume that this virus will go away because the way th I, I think Mr. Trump was talking about is thinking that this is probably like you know another flu virus. But this is not. This is a new virus and no one has immunity. So even if the summer comes along, uh, it's still contagious. People will still get it and from close proximity and all this talk about the heat is mainly data about surfaces that need to be cleaned and whether the virus can uh, you know withstand the heat so I, I i don't think it would go away because of the heat because uh, you know if no one has immunity to the virus yet so it's still it will still spread so we still have to take responsibility to isolate ourselves at the moment and what happens uh, in cases like we just saw uh, i think it was yesterday in Japan, there's a person that had uh, COVID-19, uh, developed its antibodies, healed, went back home. A month later, it came back. Right. And they have it again. We, we heard a case that someone was reinfected after um, a few weeks of showing no symptoms. So I think they're studying right now to see if whether the virus was either like dormant, it was still there, or if he was actually reinfected, which could mean uh, the possibility that uh, even if he got immunity initially from this virus, uh, it could just mean that the virus mutated enough not to give him immunity the second time around, and he's, he got reinfected. So what does that mean, being dormant or mutated? It means it's a third strain or another strain? Or no, the, these, are, these are RNA viruses, and they basically mutate throughout the replication cycle. And sometimes they mutate to the point where they change 
uh, some structure of their proteins on their surface that can become uh, a complete different strain. As we saw initially, they talked about the L and S strain. The S strain was the initial one that uh, the virus jumped from animals to humans. And we saw that it was still spreading through humans. And then they isolated in China that uh, another strain called the L strain that mutated. And they're thinking that this strain, we're not sure yet, but they're, they're looking into to see if this is more virulent. Uh, what that means basically is when a virus mutates to another strain and becomes more virulent, it just means that it, it found a way to evade our immune system. And right now, we don't know yet if it's more virulent or not. Uh, but these viruses do mutate because they're RNA viruses, and eventually we will find new strains. And this is why we're, we're telling people to take this serious, to isolate themselves, to avoid more strains coming out, because then it will become more difficult to control if, if like I said, these viruses become more vir virulent and can reinfect people who had some sort of immunity initially. So right now we don't know uh, if people can get lifelong immunity, but it, from the case that we saw in... Uh, in Japan, I believe it was, uh, a person was reinfected. So clearly, this is not showing signs of a lifelong immunity. And that's why we need to be careful not to spread this virus to avoid these uh, viruses from mutating right now. So in a nutshell right now, in Canada, what we should be doing is, if you're sick, stay home. Stay home, that's right. If you're not sick, and you were four or five, and you've, if you're not sick and you've traveled, Try to stay home for about four or five days. Right. You have to quarantine yourself for at least two weeks, as the government suggested, and the medical ex experts as well. And and especially if you were in contact with anyone who traveled or who has suspicion that may have had uh, an infection as well. Uh, for people who aren't sick, you know, just be vigilant, careful. Uh, we say practice basic hygiene because this virus is preventable. Uh, just wash your hands. Like they say, don't touch your face, which is... You know, basic hygiene we all learned when we were growing up. And uh, these are uh, viruses that spread from uh, uh, droplets, from people coughing or sneezing. So always make sure not to touch too many surfaces when you're out there. And go about your business if you're healthy, but just be aware and, and try to avoid as much contact as you can, especially large group gatherings. So we see these, uh, like especially in the U.S., this travel bans and I don't, even, I don't know. I don't want to say millions, but at least hundreds of thousands of people are rushing to the airports to get back home. Uh, for sure, there's going to be some people that are infected. We saw the Ontario government that came out. They had last week the largest mining conference in Canada, 25,000 people or so from across right. the world. Apparently, there were two, three people that have COVID-19 that were at that conference. What does that mean? Like, what, 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 what can? How does that? How can that impact? And, and we also saw a picture at the Chicago airport <laughs> where the government said we're going to take the temperature of people coming back, but you had a six-hour lineup. Yeah, and there's packed. thousands of people <laughs> waiting to get uh, yeah. through the border. And like, there's going to be some sort of shoot-up of cases. Uh, yeah, th this is why we're telling people to avoid unnecessary travel, especially in areas that have high cases of uh, this virus. And travel ban isn't working very well because if you ban one country from coming in, people are going to find a way to find connecting flights to get back to where they need to. So travel ban is not the most effective way to prevent this from spreading. Uh, unnecessary travel, uh, if you cancel your trips, unfortunately, like luxurious trips, people don't need to go on cruise ships anymore because we saw this is one of the biggest spread. Well, uh, it just circulates all the air within right, the cabin, right? right? So. Yeah, and, and this is why flights aren't too much at risk because they have good circulation and filters to block to capture all these bacteria and viruses but, in the but air. But that's once you're in the airplane. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Before the getting in the plane, yes, you yes. get in the, the airport. Right. right. And and that's why I think traveling is more, uh, traveling by, by plane is easier to control because everyone has an assigned seat and if someone is really infected and they travel, they can look around who was sitting next to them and how far apart they were from each other and they can contact those people to see if they're, uh, you know, to get tested. Uh, but if you go on a cruise ship or, like I said, any any other luxurious trip, it's hard to control and keep track of Well, this. I think now they're closing down all the, the cruise ships. Yeah, uh, the I think they're delaying all uh, yeah. cruise ships till July right now because yeah. I think they were supposed to start in April, in Canada at least. Uh, the other, uh, the other um, aspect that came out is 
uh, I think I read it this morning from uh, one of the newspapers in uh, Montreal, is the gym. People think they're, I'm going to go get healthy. Now is the time to go get healthy, go to the gym. <laughs> and uh, that's when you're puffing and breathing more, right? So right. If, if you're sick, you shouldn't go to the gym in general. Um, but, yeah, a gym is like another social gathering. There could be hundreds of people in the gym. So, yeah, we have to avoid these areas for the next two weeks. And, and we just saw the government here in Quebec announce that school are closed for, what, I think, two weeks. Yep. What do we do in two weeks? Everybody go back to school? <laughs> <laughs> well, in two weeks, they're going to reassess the situation and they're going to let us know if there's any increased cases or if, if, it's, if it's contained. Under control. Yeah, so if, if it's, it's under contained, control. contained, you think it would be okay to go right. reopen school? Right? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's what might happen if, if we see there's a nice containment and there's no increase in cases. Uh, we're going to have to reassess because right now, timing is everything and at least give us two weeks to figure out if we can contain it and if everyone does their civil duty to respect this and take this seriously maybe we can go back to work in two weeks and go back to school and everything will be normal and especially sick people whether they're tested or not they really need to quarantine themselves uh, from home and and if you are in home and the rest of your family is not sick Uh, especially we're talking about the el elderly as well, uh, to even isolate themselves in their house too if they can, as much as they can. And of course, make sure you have cleaning supplies and you know, uh, you know, know, soap and water and uh, some sort of sanitation. People use Lysol wipes, things like that. Uh, so people shouldn't panic and go, like I said, binge shop all these things because if, if some people are sick that need these cleaning supplies, don't have them, uh, it could become problematic at home because then you can affect your whole family. And what's this thing with toilet paper? Why is everybody going crazy with toilet paper? Uh, I don't understand. I, I, I don't know where this panic started <laughs> from, but I'm assuming people are thinking that if there's a lockdown of the city, uh, they might not have these essential supplies. I don't know. Food is more important, I find. Uh, If you don't have food, I, I, what do you need toilet think, paper? I think, <laughs> food, I think food is also becoming scarce in some uh, supermarkets, but I, I think uh, it's becoming, a, I think, a social media joke with the toilet paper. Everybody's posting about it. Um, but yeah, it has nothing to do with the virus. I mean, you. Won't, it, I mean, it's a respiratory infection. Uh, it's nothing to do with people getting diarrhea or anything. Uh, I think uh, of all the <laughs> thing uh, the, uh, the, to predict demand, you would assume that toilet paper is the easiest <laughs> one. <right? laughs> you, sh you shouldn't be running out in your planning of ordering toilet paper. But but look, if, <laughs> even if you're a family of four. Um, if you buy a 12 pack roll, I'm sure okay, it's gonna last you for two weeks. <laughs> we're not gonna go into the statistics. But that's the, the thing. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't understand it either. What's yeah. going on with the toilet paper? It's just. I think this is the people that are. Uh, I mean, all jokes aside, these are people who are miseducated. Uh, especially if the media is causing this panic, if they're reporting that you know, uh, this grocery store uh, has no more toilet paper and people are freaking out, so they're just bin shopping. Uh, but I think people should be really educated about the situation and not panic. Because right now at Can in Canada we're at low risk, and let's hopefully it stays that way, so we can go about our, uh, about our business in two weeks from now. Because yeah. uh, what you look at the when you look at the breakouts, they really happen in areas where uh, a lot of the Chinese travelers go. Italy, you know, the Trevi Fountain, the Colosseum, right. uh, California and U.S. Uh, uh, obviously Greece now, Spain, all of Europe. Because there's a lot of travel for. Right. Tourism, so so, in so. In initially, those tourists that, if they were infected and they went to these different countries, obviously, uh, th they're saying that maybe for every person that's infected, they can spread it to two or even three. They're they're estimating. So you can see how it can exponentially jump. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, if if people that are sick are still traveling, whether they have this virus or not, they should they should really isolate themselves because it could exponentially jump in every country in the world. And right now, I think it's. Uh, I think it's been in 140 countries, at least have one case right now, and we're 195 countries in the world, so we're getting there. Almost every country on earth is going to have this uh, uh, virus. We, 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 can, uh, we can expect outbreaks around the Vancouver, Banff area, Toronto, uh, obviously Montreal. Uh, how, how, like, do we really know about these cases? Because a lot of people could be infected, we won't know anything, and then suddenly... You know, it just sparks, right? Well, Because a lot of people can be. Right. So a, a lot of people who are infected, uh, there's, a, there's a number that they call and they ask, you know, basically if you've traveled, if you've been in contact with anyone, do you have these symptoms of this COVID-19? 
and if they say yes they'll be tested and i think there's about like at least in quebec there's i think a thousand people waiting to be tested uh something like that or 600 i don't know i don't remember the exact number uh but yeah we're, we're asking these people who potentially think are infected to at least isolate themselves until they confirm if they're positive or negative and we won't know until all these tests are done but the reality is we have a few cases here in canada there's like a 244 i think as of today um, and if there's thousands being tested, yes, it can easily jump up if because we don't know yet at the yeah, moment. Yeah, because also a thousand people could be still going around with their business yes. and infecting others and others. Yes, and like I said, for every thousand people, it can it can double or triple. Yeah. And 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 if we don't do anything within two weeks, we will, we could become like Italy, have a complete lockdown if it spreads that fast. And what about p- countries like India that didn't really take it serious? They announced yesterday one death, and the only reason they announced the one death is because they. The person died and they noticed he had it. Uh, you know, and then that's when you get social media saying, well, look at India, they haven't done anything, you only have one death, it's not serious. They could be really spreading right now, right? And, and that's the thing. Do we, I'm not sure if all countries have these kits to test if people are really, like, are they really dying from this infection or are they dying from something else? Or they just, you know, are they just looking at uh, clinical symptoms basing it on that? Or did they really do the test to see if they actually have the virus? So again, we, it depends on each country if they're how fast can they test these people to see if they're spreading it or not, and it's hard to tell uh, with the death rate as well too because uh, if people are just using uh, clinical symptoms as as a positive test to see if they have uh, this virus, um, it can skew the death rate results. That's why we see in some countries eight percent death rate, where in some countries it's under one percent. Yeah, coming back to that point is uh, at the beginning the low, the death rate was lower because they were counting people that had developed antibodies for previous coronaviruses, right? right? They were just taking, from what I understand, you take a blood test and it checks if you have antibodies or... Yeah, so they were probably doing serology tests to check the antibodies. And, you know, if you had another coronavirus in the past, like a common cold, um, you could have tested positive, but... And they would count you part of the right. denominator to... <laughs> right, exactly. So this is why uh, we're, we're providing, the CDC is providing also kits that test through PCR, which is basically... Uh, a, a test to detect the actual genetic material of the virus to see if you actually have it so it's specific for that virus and then this way um, you can confirm you know without fault more or less that you have the virus or not mm-hmm. so how do you think this is going to play out in Italy uh, so far uh, this lockdown I'm, I'm seeing people are kind of respecting it uh, well the army's <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> the so in the streets they have no home. choice obviously um, but I think it's very critical for them because the next, uh, I would say, week or even two, if they can control it. That, but the, that, the next, short. the next, yes, the next week would tell if their health system might shut down because they don't have enough ICU beds for people who have severe pneumonia. Yeah, I heard from uh, some people in the hospital that they run out of masks, they run out, and then the doctors get yeah, infected. Yeah, and yeah. The, I think the medical doctor the, of the health the exactly chief. the health professionals are more at risk because they're the ones in contact with these patients and. If they don't have enough supplies to protect themselves, then imagine all these health professionals getting sick. Who's going to help the the patients after if they can't, uh, you know, help themselves either? The the other thing that we've been hearing about is the U.S. has taken this really serious right now because they've no, well studies have shown or, or the people that the literature that we've seen in the last few months is it attacks obviously older people, people that have health problems, people that smoke and. What we've heard is that since the U.S. has a lot of obese people, obesity has similar effects on your lungs than as smoking. Is that true well, or false? I, well, we wouldn't go that far. I mean, there, it depends how obese a person is, obviously, and uh, how good their lungs are, obviously. But smoking obviously affects your lungs directly. So if you don't have strong uh, lung capacity to begin with, obviously you're more at risk. Uh, but when it comes to obes- obesity, uh, you know, there's different degrees of people having obesity, but but yeah, any, any comorbidity or any underlying condition, we could be at risk because we don't have enough data to know uh, how deadly this virus is right now. And this is why we're seeing most people who have lung problems or some immune immune compromised, uh, you know, problems that they have from from other conditions, uh, they're the ones mostly at risk. And yeah, I mean, we, we can't rule out any comorbidity or any underlying condition and obesity, obesity could be one of them. Yeah. Okay. I, think, I think as a take home message is uh, people should just listen to their health professionals and 
the government, at least the governments in Canada are listening to the health professionals and they're taking quick action. And people shouldn't panic, especially don't read stuff on social media because it's becoming, I think, a joke. And people are just taking it too lightly. Uh, or the extreme. Taking it to the end of the right. world. Then they, then they <laughs> panic because they don't understand the situation. And because of this lack of education, they're just uh, you know, buying all sorts of non-essential supplies. And we're not on lockdown right now, so people don't have to panic. And our but healthcare sick, system is ready. Yes. You're sick, stay if you're home. sick, stay home. If you've been traveling, stay home at least four or five days. That's right. You know, you're gonna go to the grocery store. You're gonna go about your business. Stay far away from people. Six feet. Wash your hands. Uh, uh, if you see somebody coughing, if you're gonna cough, uh, you know, like, right. Uh, uh, basic hygiene is the only way to prevent it right now. And because of the rapid spread, uh, we have to unfortunately uh, social distance ourselves from large gatherings for the time being and hopefully if we really pull through together and within two weeks now maybe we can go about our business because maybe all those isolated cases will be isolated and quarantined in a hospital or some sort of medical setting where it will not spread anymore to the general population and we can go about our business and this just doesn't depend on on, on our country and our community but it's the whole world has to do this because people are still traveling and ill people have to take it serious as well as as well as healthy people too so hopefully we can, you know, get this under control. So far, we're at low risk in Canada. That's why people shouldn't be panicking. We're doing a great job, and hopefully everyone listens to the health experts and, you know, isolate themselves as much as they can. Perfect. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you in the next uh, week or so if there's any update. Uh, we'll uh, maybe get together and just inform people what's really going on, and, uh, and uh, hopefully in two weeks we'll have good news from the health system that it's under control. And we won't have to have another two weeks or another two weeks or because you know, this is not going to from the other thing is that people think this is in two weeks everything's done this is not this is going to last six months but the severity of it yes the, the severity of it can last months and the isolation and quarantine can last for years until we find an actual vaccine or some sort of treatment plan or at least to contain it to prevent the spread um like i said the, the first sars uh, epidemic lasted for two years so we don't want to get to the point where you know, we have a complete lockdown of our health system because this is where it's going to become really serious right here. And hopefully uh, the European countries will see what's happening in, in Italy and take action and prevent the spread. And I'm hoping the UK will listen to the, you know, the scientists that are saying this herd immunity is a big risk. And we haven't have enough data to see if any herd immunity is going to work in this situation. It's a new virus, so we have to be very cautious right now. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Dennis. Thank you. And uh, we'll probably update everyone in the next couple of weeks if there's any new, new development.